I'm sorry. It's there's different levels to it. And I'm not sitting up here saying that everybody was saying this. I'm saying that the people that were watching Luca and that weren't U of A fans were saying this. Jared, no, I just hold up. Let me let me talk now. Okay, fuck this. Last, here we go. Ooh, buddy. One DeAndre Ayton, Put first him. overall in 2018, taking over Luka Doncic. I was one of the flag bearers of the draft DeAndre Ayton group, and I'd like to apologize <laughs> to each and every one of you who I ever tried to sell on that bullshit because I was stupid, and this is part of why I hate the draft. You could put him straight at the top of franchise altering bust because Ooh. that was the one time you've had the number one pick and you screwed yourself silly with it when you look at everybody else, including Luca mm. in that draft. Hold, on, Hold up. Okay, other than Marvin Bagley. Uh -oh. If you had went Marvin Bagley first, uh -oh. I would have I'd be done with this franchise. Here we go. So. Go, go ahead, ahead Gerald. No, you go ahead, man. I <laughs> no, I, I know you got thoughts. I, I do got thoughts, but I kind of want to hear your thoughts first. All right, uh -oh. let me let me go first. Then. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna try to rewrite history here. There was a very clear moment early in the draft evaluation process where Luka Doncic was the clear number one prospect, and then as we got further into the draft process, and DeAndre Ayton had a draft workout here that felt more like a fucking coronation ceremony, it changed. Things changed. Like suddenly DA was at the top of the list because everyone in that building knew that the Suns were going to take DA no matter what. And there were a lot of us that were doing this draft evaluation process that were watching Luca play overseas at age 16, 17 against EuroLeague talent, which is better than what DA played over here in the NCAA and was the MVP of that league. Like everybody that evaluated Luca and watched his stuff was like, yeah, this guy is going to be really, really good. He was the number, he was the clear number one choice, but there was the U, the unavoidable U of A factor. There was the unavoidable hometown kid. We've never had a franchise center like this before. This guy could be the next David Robinson. And so it, it kind of got, like, I'll be 100% honest. This was the first time in my son's career where I felt the impact of like, wow, People that disagree with my son's opinion can be really nasty online. I got called the F word. I got called racist sorry, because I want a DA over. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> like I got that was my first experience with like, wow, people can really be dicks online over differing opinions. <laughs> and I'm not saying that that has any bearing on why I'm putting him number one in the franchise altering mistake category. But you look at what Luka Doncic is doing now. He is a generational talent. And even if he doesn't win the finals this year, you could have had Booker and Luka Doncic on the same team. You could have paired them together for the next decade as the best backcourt in the NBA. And I'm sorry, this narrative that like Book and Luka wouldn't have gotten along is crazy to me. We've talked so much about how Booker is a good off-ball scorer, about how he's needed a point guard, all this shit. Luka could have been that guy for 10 years it's just, it's mind blowing to me, and it sucks that they missed out on a guy who's probably going to wind up being one of the ten or fifteen greatest players of all time. You talk about scouting, though. The story is, I have it on very good authority, mm -hmm. that Sarver wouldn't let Ryan McDonough go overseas to watch Luca. It was Sarver and James Jones that that were the only two allowed to go do it. They wouldn't send. Uh, they wouldn't send him over. Uh, and so the GM didn't even get a chance to see this kid in person. Uh, and there were, were forces that were pushing for DA. And I also understand there was a large contingent. I know you're saying that Luca was the clear cut, yeah. but there there was a large contingent of of even NBA people, not just fans, that were saying DA too. It was It was a split. In, it was in a split sense. in Arizona. Everywhere else, I'm telling you, the yeah. draft experts were saying, Luca's generational, DA can be, but this guy is the closest thing to a sure thing in the draft we've seen in quite a while. He's dominating better competition overseas against grown men. DA is getting sent home by Buffalo in the first round of the tournament. I'm sorry. It's There's different levels to it. And I'm not sitting up here saying that everybody was saying this. I'm saying that the people that were watching Luca 
and that weren't U of A fans were saying this. Jared, no, I just dis- hold up. Let me let me talk now. Yeah. Okay, fuck this. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, no, listen. Like I I get that that's your perspective, but I completely disagree that it was a consensus across the world that Luca should be the number one overall pick over Da because even if you just get outside the Suns world, okay, Luca drops to number three, not even number two because whatever reason you want to say, who is number and two, he get, and he gets <laughs> traded. To number five for Dallas and Atlanta. Like, if Atlanta knew that Luca was going to be this surefire, can't miss prospect, you know, world defeater, then they don't trade for Trey Young. Like, that just does not happen. But instead, they make the trade. So there's that's at least three teams that passed up on Luka Doncic. Number one, right off the bat. Okay, number two, DA was no slouch. And I know, like, it, it was surprising to hear like people talk about his motor. Uh, in talking about like games and practices and stuff like that, because if you've ever been around Sean Miller, you know, like that's just not going to be true. Uh, he would have beat that kid's ass into oblivion. It doesn't matter how big of a superstar he was. Also, I was there for like 27 of the 32 games, including right there uh, against Buffalo, where yeah, they they fucking were terrible, but like he looked every bit the part of a dominant big like that you're going to find in college basketball and like the physical strength that he showed empowering and in, in, in overpowering a lot of guys in in the Pac-12 was just like so eye-opening and you just don't see guys like DA come along very often with the athleticism and the skill sets, you know, that he had. Now, of course, we don't know how this is all going to play out. I mean, but the guy did get us to the finals and he was a very important part of that 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 run to the finals. Even though they lost, he was a very important part of that run to the finals. Without DA, I don't think we get to the finals because who else are we going to have at center at that point in time, right? And then also, like, he he averaged a double-double his entire career. Like, I know we would have loved for him to be as dominant as Luka, and I get that. And I'm not saying that he was a, you know, he should be on the you know, the who list or the, the splitting hairs list, but I don't think that he should be at the top of the top in terms of franchise-altering mistakes because he did he did perform well. And he did. He is still in the top like ten of rebounding and, and I think uh, game, uh, points scored in franchise history. Like he he did something while he was here. He wasn't just like Sam Bowie who just never did anything, or Greg Oden who just never did anything because of injuries or because of lack of talent. Like he has the talent. It's unfortunate that we couldn't get the most out of him and really piece him by, but besides uh, Devin Booker to be that Kobe Shaq 2.0. But I think that's also the part of the problem with D.A. is D.A. set himself up for failure so many times by saying stupid shit that he had no business saying instead of just letting his play do the talking. He talked a lot talking about the Sha- Shaq and Kobe 2.0 or I'm playing for that next contract. When those things were uttered, immediately people were already taken back like, whoa, what? The first contract after this rookie contract should not be the goal. Isn't a championship or MVPs or whatever, aren't those the goals? And that obviously, it, it, it put a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. And then the end of DA, that last year obviously was was terrible. But I'm sorry, like I sat there, I looked at it, and even if I take away the U of A, listen, man, I've been hard on U of A players left and right, so I don't have a U of A bias when it comes to NBA scouting or, or, or prospecting. Like, I think some players are better than others. I didn't think Alonzo Trier should be in the NBA, and now he's not. Like, I didn't think Raleigh Elkins should be in the NBA. I told them both to their face, like, you should not be going pro because I don't think you have it in you, and they haven't made it into the NBA. DA, I felt like, was a generational talent at the time, at the time, and I felt like it was a landslide that people here in the Valley want a DA. Now, I I congratulate you on getting your analysis right, for sure. But, like, I don't think it was a consensus across the country that it was Luca or nobody else because if that was the case, then then number two, number three, and number five would have taken Luca, and they wouldn't have passed up on him. Let me clarify. I'm talking about the draft analysis people, the people that were writing these articles, that were doing the research. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Are those people, too? No, because that's the thing. He t- it's literally he, that's their the jobs. thing. You brought up. You brought up. He just said that Sarver wouldn't let his fucking GM go watch okay, a top again, prospect. Beyond like, the sun, how is that? We're talking about Are we going to act that like these? Passed on Luca. You think but that's that they my were point, just Lindsay. As cheap as the Sarver? argument, the argument that other teams passed on Luca, so it's not that bad, holds no weight when you look at who the other teams were. The Sacramento Kings, who have drafted like fucking dog shit for a decade, and the Atlanta Hawks, who have been in hell. Between that space of we're building through the draft and we're competing for a decade as well. Like that doesn't absolve them for me. It really doesn't. If anything, it makes it worse. Like 
don't feel bad. We're in the same class as the Kings, except we went first. Like that, okay. is, that makes me feel worse than better. But, but we didn't take go, Marvin Bagley. But I mean, but I get that. <laughs> and I'm not saying that Aiton is a bad pick because like you said, he did help the Suns get to the finals. The, the value is one of the greatest moments in Suns playoff history, franchise history. Anybody that was in the building is going to remember that moment until the day they die. So I'm not trying to say that Aiton was some terrible player here. But when you look at the gap between the two, the fact that he's no longer even on the roster and the fact that Luca is going to go on and do this like, yeah, we went to one finals with D.A. We could have been to multiple with Luca, depending on how you build out the rest of that team. So that for me is why he's number one. It's not any, anything about eight necessarily, but it is about the fact that you passed up a top 10, top 15 player of all time, probably by the time his career pans out. And that was the only time you ever had the number one pick like that. That just it, it gives it extra weight. For okay, me. so I think there's truth in what both of you are saying. If you look back at the mock drafts, a lot of them had DA because it was it? after the ceremony, I mean, the coronation I mean, that, ceremony. I mean, I I get that, but I also think Saul, you're right in. It's tough to to look at it as a horrible, horrible mistake because DA wasn't. That bad. The reason I put him at the top of the franchise altering is the fact that that Luca, if you had him with who he is, that hat would have had a much bigger impact than what DeAndre Ayton was. I, so that that's it. Hindsight I, I, is why I, I, I put I get, him there. I get that. That's the the perspective. And and again, like these are things that like we can never predict in terms of like do we know how this would have all worked out? Have we not done this, that, the other? Right. right. What I'm gonna say is is like listen. At the end of the day. Whether you like DA or not, whether we got Luca or not, at, at, after the five years of DeAndre Aiden, we went to the playoffs three out of those five years. We had one of the best season, regular seasons in Suns history in that five year period. We went to the finals, two wins away from it was the first time we won the first two games of the NBA finals ever. Like we thought we were going to win the NBA championship for a little while there. And DA was a huge part that season because it looked like he was going to start living up to the promise mm -hmm. of what was there. Right. And then everything just kind of fell apart after that. So I'm, I'm sitting there like, okay, even if you want to put him at franchise altering mistake, you still got something out of him. Oh, so I don't think he should be at the top of the top because I think at least he gave you something. He gave you some results and the other guys on that list didn't give you shit. They didn't give you any single thing, not a shred of anything you could point to and say, oh yeah, at least we got this out of it. Not but, even one. But I think, I think you're trying to, uh, I think you feel like all the blame if you put him at one is solely on his shoulders. And I don't think when you're looking at a franchise altering mistake, you got to think the mistake of the owner, the mistake of the GM, what another guy, uh, what another guy did that makes it feel like that. Well, I'm and glad you why. brought that up, Espo, so. because if you look at the other two picks that year, okay. <laughs> All right. First, Mikel. There's a good argument that Mikhail Bridges should have never fucking been drafted in the first place mm -hmm. because uh, Homie was right behind him and Shane Gillis Alexander. Well, I and I sat there and watched Shane Gillis Alexander, and I was just like, man, that dude's pretty fucking good. Mm -hmm. Like, he was right there in front of me playing against fucking KB, uh, KBD? K to Bates Diab, yeah, mm -hmm. in Ohio State. And he murdered him. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, man, that guy's pretty fucking good. Mm -hmm. And then we took Mikhail, and I was just like, what? Well, you okay, know the cool. story. Like, you know the story. No, but yeah. give me give okay. me the story in a second. But then if you fast forward and we take Ely motherfucking Okobo, mm -hmm. and you have Mikhail on your team, right? You've drafted Mikhail. Mm -hmm. Villanova product right there. Mm -hmm. Hey, tell me a little bit about Jalen fucking Brunson. Mm -hmm. No? Okay, we're gonna take this 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 dude out of France who was getting cooked. Mm -hmm. every single day in practice. Lindsay was there. She could tell you. Poor dude Ellie. was getting <laughs> murdered every day in practice. Like, how are you here still? I don't even understand this. Like and RIP to George King. Uh, he Poor didn't Ellie. make it. <laughs> didn't but, make the roster. but you know the difference there. Like, sure, number sure, one, yeah, number of course, 10, of course, number of course, 31. Of course. But yeah. those are all, as well, could have been franchise altering to a certain degree as well. But again, I'm, I'm splitting hairs. Which, by the way, we chose not to put McKell in here for a reason because DA was already going to be... <laughs> Spicy enough. Divisive the last enough. thing we needed to do was add in Mikhail there. The, I've this. This is a true, hundred percent true story. They had agreed to trade and and draft Shea Gildress Alexander, mm -hmm. and there is there are people who have said OKC could hear Robert Sarver screaming 
at Brian McDonough at, during that call, and he killed it and said that they had to draft uh, that they had to draft Mikhail Bridges in part because his son had worked as an intern in the basketball operations department that that summer oh. and really liked Mikhail Bridges. Hmm. So uh, supposedly <laughs> Ryan McDonough turned around and said that Mikhail Bridges better be Michael fucking Jordan <laughs> for what we're about to give up here uh, for this. So that makes it even worse when you know that Shea Gilders Alexander was in your it was there like literally was a son if you had said yes so yeah i i get it but a lot again, of fuck ups that year I, is what i'm saying i, I get it but again that's number 10 and number 11 versus number yes. one and i also think when it comes to da too i don't know it's tough because da did have all the physical traits of a guy who should be quote unquote dominating right i think a lot of his downfall came from attitude between the years yeah between 100%. the years 100 percent. it was all mental if you put books drive lucas drive whoever else you want to into da's head he's insane mm -hmm. absolutely insane and i think a lot of people were hoping that they could pull that out of him yeah. from the mental side of things because physically he was perfectly gifted to dominate this league but that, that's where i struggle though because a lot of draft experts brought up the motor thing and it was dismissed by a lot of people because he had the physical traits and you're saying look hey you can get this out of him but sometimes you can't that was that was my but they concern. used but they used a lot like they wound a, up being right a lord a large portion of that was also because of the buffalo game let's let's be real about that because again Some again it, yeah. again i watched every minute and and a lot of it right there i never even once thought this kid has had a motor problem, not mm -hmm. even once until the NBA scouts started mm -hmm. uttering that shit. And I was just like, and I thought it was just like, they're just trying to, to, to dissuade the sons from taking DA. They want him to take it because they want him to go somewhere else. I didn't know, but I, I, cause I just never saw it. I just never saw it. I thought he had plenty good motor, a lot of fourth, fifth, sixth opportunities at the rim in terms of like getting the ball to himself and the effort that he showed. Like, I just thought he was a, a solid, solid player. It just, you know, he got to the NBA and it was just like, you know what it reminds me of? It's like when I was in high school, our goal was to make it to America West Arena at the time, right? In the, in our season, We're like, hey, if we can, we can have a successful enough season where we get to the state tournament and we make it all the way to America West Arena, that would be the final four. And that's our goal, right? Mm -hmm. And then we beat St. Mary's ass by like in overtime. And um and I, I didn't beat a team's ass in overtime. Beat him by ten in overtime. Okay, that's good enough. <laughs> that's beat right. Anyway, and I remember like, oh my gosh, like we made it. We we hit the final four. Never did I even think that like we could win the state championship. And then we appropriately went out and got our asses handed to us in the semifinals. And it was just like, damn, I wish I wish I didn't have that mentality. I wish I would have just been like, I go hard all the time. Doesn't matter. Um, and I feel like Da. He reached his final four, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm good." And he just kind of coasted, and then he got shit kicked in a little bit, and then he went to, uh, and and he got better during the bubble a little bit, and then obviously the run to the finals. I thought he played very well, especially in the playoffs. He turned it up when he could, and he felt like, "Oh man, this maybe this is what we're gonna get." Mm -hmm. And then he showed you again against the New Orleans Pelicans the next year in the playoffs. Like, okay, that DA is back. He played really well in that series, and then it all just disappeared. Wow. And and I think that the ability for DA to take over games, to be a dominant force, to impose his will was just not not evident, and that's what ends up killing him as the number one pick. One last – Enslow in the chat brings up a good point. There were a lot of questions about Luca's attitude no, going no, no, into no, that no, draft. No, no. There was You're one bullshit. You're going to claim one person. There was one but bullshit <laughs> freaking propaganda draft scout evaluation. Don't even bring that There were up. a lot of questions – that all came Stop. from a Yeah, from one fucking <laughs> propaganda. Stop. <laughs>